Okay. Tangent lines to a circle theorem says that a line is tangent to a circle. Okay. Tangent means it touches at one point and only one point to a circle if and only if it is perpendicular. What does perpendicular mean? Forms a right angle. Or 90 degrees to the radius at the point of tangency. That's where it touches. So it's tangent to a circle if and only if it's perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So if it forms a right angle where it touches the circle. Now, here's what, here's what we can use this for. Okay? What this means is if they tell you a line is tangent, then you know that it forms a right angle with the radius. Okay. If they tell you a line is tangent, then you know it forms a right angle with the radius. Or vice versa. If it forms a right angle with the radius, then you can call it a tangent line to the circle. Okay, That's what the if and only if means. It means if you know one condition, then the other one's true. And vice versa. If you know the other condition, then the first one is true. Um, all right, so tangent lines, if it touches the circle at one point, you got a 90 degree angle where it touches. Okay, let's look at actually using this property here. All right, so we got a couple of diagrams. Number two says refer to the figure shown at the right. If line L is tangent to circle O at point A, so when I read that, I should immediately go, when it says line L is tangent to O at A, I need to go over here and at A, I need to put a little right angle. Yeah, I need to put a little right angle right there because if it's tangent right there, then I've got a 90 degree angle. That's what our theorem just said. Dakota, sit up. The radius of the circle is four inches. Well, what part of that picture is my radius? AO, right? That's my radius. So I'm going to put four right there. AB equals three inches. It wants to know what is the length of BO. Well, Jason, what did you mention a minute ago with those lines and stuff? They formed what? What did they form? What shape did they make? You said it was a triangle, okay? Do we see the triangle right there? Yeah. With A, B, A, O, and B, O, that forms a triangle. And not just a triangle, what kind of triangle? Oh, right, right triangle. What can we do with the right triangle? The Pythagorean theorem. We've got two legs, so we can square the two legs, add them together, and that gives us C squared. So let's crunch the numbers. Three squared plus four squared equals 25. So what is our hypotenuse length here? Five. We take the square root. So five is our length OB. Five inches. Or BO. However you want to list it. Okay. It says explain why we really, I mean, we, we explained it. Okay. If it's a tangent line, then it forms a right angle. So we have a right triangle. So we use that green theorem. Okay, <laughs> so, um, oh, and just as a side note, um, 3, 4, 5 is a, what we consider a special right triangle, okay? Um, 3, 4, 5, if the two legs of the triangle are 3 and 4, then we know the hypotenuse is 5. Vice versa, if we know the hypotenuse is 5 and one of the legs is 3, I know the other leg is 4, okay? 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's a special triangle um, that you should remember. Let's look at B. B resets the whole problem. Okay, B resets the whole problem. So <clears throat> B says if AB equals 5 
AO equals 12 and BO equals 13, why is it correct to conclude that the line L must be tangent to the circle at point A? So if it's tangent, what does it form? A right angle, okay? So if it forms a right angle, then the Pythagorean theorem should hold, right? Let's check the Pythagorean theorem with these numbers here. AB is a leg, AO is a leg, so 5 squared plus 12 squared. We're trying to find out, I'm going to put a question mark over my equal sign. Does it equal BO? BO is the hypotenuse. Does it equal 13 squared? Jason says yes. Not that I don't trust him, but let's check. I don't trust him. You don't trust him? You're wrong. 5 squared plus 12 squared, 169. Guess what 13 squared is? 169. Y'all got to have more faith in Jason. All right, so it is true. 5 squared plus 12 squared is 13 squared. Okay, so <clears throat> why is it correct? It satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem, therefore it's a right triangle. Those three little dots in a triangle symbolize therefore, just so you know. Okay? So it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem, therefore it's a right triangle. Okay? Oh, I gave myself another I gave myself another figure, another diagram to use there. So you can label I, I put two copies of the, the circle there so you could put the five, twelve, and the thirteen. I didn't realize that. Okay, so 5, 12, and 13 on that other diagram, it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. Therefore, it's a right triangle. Therefore, we have a right angle. If that's a right angle right there, then it is a tangent line. Okay, so if they ask you, is this a tangent line, you're checking to see if the Pythagorean theorem works. If the Pythagorean theorem doesn't work, then it's not, uh, it's not an actual tangent line. Okay? All right. Um, now, this question is phrased and it's trying to get us to prove it, um, but I'm not worried about the proof. I'm just going to tell you that it is true. Um, you can use congruent triangles to prove that PA is congruent to PB. So we're talking about uh, this segment up here on the top, this tangent line, and this tangent line. They are equal to each other. So here's our next theorem. Tangent lines from an exterior point. P is considered our exterior point right here. Okay, P is the exterior point. It's a point outside of the circle. Exterior means outside, right? Exterior paint. You use it on the outside of your house. Okay. P is outside of the circle, so that's our exterior point. There are two tangent lines coming from that point. Guess what's true about those two lines? They're equal to each other. Segments drawn tangent to a circle from an exterior point are congruent or equal. Okay. So those two tangent lines have the same measure. PA and PB have the same measure. Because they come from the same exterior point. They have to come from the same point. Okay? So let's use that property. All right, so uh, we're talking about a satellite that is orbiting the Earth. It says, suppose a satellite is located in space at point S. What would we call point S out here? Exterior point. Okay, it's a point on the exterior of the circle. So S is the exterior point. In its view of Earth, 
in the plane of the equator, the angle between the lines of sight at S is 50 degrees. So we got 50 degrees at angle S. It says the radius of the Earth is 3,963 miles. So that would be from here to here. That's a radius. 3,963 miles. Um, <clears throat> what this picture is, is if we're looking directly on top of the Earth, the North Pole is at the very top, the equator would be the widest point there. Okay, that's what we're looking at. Now, that's not the only place that I can put that right there. I can also put that right here. Okay, that's another radius. 3,963. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what they tell us in that paragraph. Let's look at part A. It says, what is the distance from S to the horizon along the equator? That is the length of a tangent from S to Earth's surface. So we are looking for this distance right here. Okay, we are looking for this distance right here. Well, this is a tangent line right here. So we got a right angle here, we got a right angle there. <clears throat> we don't really have a triangle right now, do we? We've got a quadrilateral. Let's make it a triangle. Okay, let's put a line right through there. That's going to cut that exactly into two pieces. So if that whole angle right there was 50 degrees, then what have we done to it now? We got 25 and 25, right? We've cut it in half, so we got 25 degrees here. We got 25 degrees here. All right, so we want to find x. Do y'all remember any of that trig stuff from math two? So Katoa. Yeah, some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. So Katoa, however you want to remember it, that's what we're going to use here. Okay? So let's review this. Here is our angle right here. Okay? The hypotenuse is easy, right? The hypotenuse is which part? That red line, right? That's the hypotenuse. Um, I like to do this. Use the little right angle there as an arrow. The right angle always points to the hypotenuse. Um, I like to do this. See where I've drawn this curve? If I extend it, then the other <clears throat> side that it touches is always the adjacent side. Remember, adjacent means beside. It touches. Okay, so that's the adjacent. So that leaves this for the opposite. Okay, that leaves the 3,963 for the opposite. All right, so we know the opposite side. We need to know the adjacent side. So which trig function is opposite and adjacent? Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. So which one is opposite and adjacent? Opposite and adjacent. Tangent. Okay, tangent. So we've got tangent of our angle, 25 degrees, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. <clears throat> How do we solve that? What do we do with the variables in the bottom? Don't need to switch places. Okay, it switches places with what's on the other side. So x is equal to 3,963 divided by the tangent of 25. Okay, so then it's just plug it into your calculator. Okay, but make sure your calculator is in degree mode. If you're somebody that likes to reset your calculator frequently, it's always going to put it back in radians. So make sure you're in degree mode before you type this in. 3,963 divided by the tangent of 25. So it's saying that this satellite is 8,498.68, what are we in, miles.
So it's up there. It's a good little distance away from the Earth. Uh, Jason could do that in two minutes. Okay, so to be honest, most of the questions that you're going to have to answer about this are not going to be this complicated. Okay, I don't, um, you're not going to have to use the trig very much, but this was a good problem <clears throat> to kind of tie everything in with the exterior tangents um, and then a little review of trig here. <clears throat> We're not going to worry about uh, part B. I just wanted to do part A of this question. Um, so, I mean, B is not that much harder. Once you've done A, it's not that much harder, but we're not going to worry about it, okay? Um, so, here's what you are going to have to know. Okay, You are going to have to use the fact that if it's tangent, it's perpendicular. Okay, If it's tangent, it forms a right angle. Um, and then... Here. Um, then you're going to have to use the property that two tangent lines from the same exterior point are congruent to each other. Okay, two tangent lines from an exterior point are congruent to each other. Um, I got one more question that I want to go over, and then I'll let you practice this. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> flip your paper over. Okay, flip your paper over at the top there. Let's look at the on your own. Okay, it says suppose a circle with center O has a radius of 10 inches. Let's label our picture. So we got 10 here, we got 10 here. I don't know which one I'm going to have to use, so I'm going to put it on both of them. <clears throat> P is a point on the ex in the ex exterior of the circle. And the tangent segments to the circle from point P are AP and BP. So these are congruent to each other. I'm just going to mark them with a little congruent line to remind myself. They're the same. Okay, it says if point P is 18 inches from the center of the circle. So where does 18 go? Is it on PA, PB, or PO? If point P is 18 inches from the center of the circle, PO. Okay, so that's 18 right here in the middle. Determine the length of AP. Well, if these are tangent lines, we got right angles. So how do we solve for that tangent line on the outside? We got two legs of a triangle, don't we? Pythagorean theorem. So how do I set it up? A squared plus 10 squared equals 18 squared. This time we have the hypotenuse. <clears throat> so 18 squared minus 10 squared. Take the square root. So it's almost, we're going to say about 15 inches. Okay, about 15 inches. We're not going to do the second part of question A. But let's look at part B. Okay, let's look at part B. Um, I put you another copy of the diagram on there because it resets. <clears throat> okay, part B says um, if the measure of angle APB is 48 degrees, determine the distances OP. AP and BP. So let's use some trig again. I'm just going to copy my triangle here. I got my right angle. My radius is still 10. That was given to me at the beginning of the problem, so I get to use that again. Um, but the 18 is gone. Okay, Part A, that, that's gone. We're looking at part B. So if APB is 48 degrees, we got the same thing that we had with that satellite problem. Okay, It cut that angle in half. So we've got 24 degrees. Um, tell me this. Which trig function do you want to use? We can pick on this one. Do you want to use sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent? Okay. Let's use tangent. So if we're using tangent, let's label our sides. We've got the hypotenuse right here. That's the easy one. 
What is 10? Is 10 opposite or adjacent? Does it touch the 24 degrees? Nope. So 10 is the opposite. <clears throat> this side up here on the top is the adjacent. So tangent is opposite 10 over adjacent. So same thing we just dealt with. Switch those. 10 divided by the tangent of 24 degrees. So the adjacent side up here is 22.5. Now we got two sides of the triangle. We can just use Pythagorean theorem. Square it, add 10 squared, <clears throat> take the square root. So our hypotenuse is 24.6 inches. All these are inches. Okay, so you only had to use trig once to find another side of the triangle. And once you have two out of three in a right triangle, you can just put that in here. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, um, I'm not going to ask you to use any trig on them, but I did want to refresh you on the trig because uh, they do test trig on the ACT. Okay, they do test, test trig 